assignment to C++. You are welcome to join me now. I mean, let the other students also join. So meanwhile, uh, point is uh, uh, the platform is all together. It is completely initiated by COVID. Okay. So you are, you are we, we are also freshers. Okay. So this is the platform where uh, uh, I started teaching uh, for the first time in my life. Okay. So I, I don't know how it is, but to the maximum possible extent, um, I tried. Okay. So still, if there are some things which needs to be repeated, or uh, some aspects where you think uh, better strategies can be opted, you can bring it to my notice so that I can uh, look into those things. Sure. So uh, another aspect of uh, scheduling these classes, specifically over a period of three weeks, is uh, because of uh, uh, networking issues that majority of the students uh, might be having problem in terms of uh, connectivity, in terms of uh, the devices, specifically those students who are staying in uh, rural areas. Okay, because now uh, is a little relaxed, so it is a alarm uh, to all those students to make ensure that they have to come to nearby, nearby safe locations where they can connect it to us and then uh, make use of uh, the time. Okay, so that is the main intention. And another intention is, uh, because the platform itself is uh, new to us, okay, so we don't know till which percentage or till which level the student uh, has understood. So if at all there is a requirement of repeating any important concepts, uh, that includes uh, starting from introductory content till the last uh, unit uh, contents. If anything wants to be repeated, you can bring it to the concerned faculty so that uh, the appropriate action can be triggered. Okay. <clears throat> okay, so these are the aspects uh, because of which uh, they have taken a decision to schedule these uh, sessions. So I... I, I, I you know some of the students might be getting irritated because uh, we are asked to repeat and we will be repeating some of the i mean almost all the courses but still uh, this is for those students benefit who are uh, uh, having poor connectivity issues and also uh, you can also make use of this time for uh, you know uh, for revision of the contents and I'm taking this opportunity to, you know, to put forward some of the four points, uh, unit wise, uh, if uh, the students don't have any doubts. Okay. Okay. Uh, knowledge. I think Akshaya. Yeah. Am I audible? Yes, sir. Yeah. Yeah. Fine. So, uh, any, yeah. Any updates about exams? Yeah, everybody are concerned about exams. Exams will be there. Okay, so it will be not like uh, the KCRS circular with all pass. <laughs> okay. So, so exams will be there uh, for certain. I think uh, already press note has came uh, to some of the affiliated uh, institutes which are, <coughs> which are affiliated to JNTU Hyderabad. Okay, so the administrative administrative and academic uh, sessions are uh, working closely to, um, to to tackle about both the internal sessional exams as well as the internal lab exams and the external lab exams and subsequently external theory exams okay so exams will be there probably i, I don't know which uh, from which date it will be but it will be there okay <clears throat> month uh, I don't know <laughs> I don't know because I'm also like you lockdown physically connected virtually so exam fee date also I don't know
i don't know exam fees date also i don't know please uh, surf in the internet in our college website okay fine so there are 27 students still half of the section needs to join anyway it's already 12 uh, 25 क्या महाफ्राज हॉटस्पॉट ऑन में छे देख ओके सो कैन समबडी एक्नॉलेज वेदर आई एम ऑडिबल यस सर ओके सो you have any doubts in unit 1 i think you have the syllabus of syllabus copy with you okay so unit 1 talks about the introduction of c++ along with uh, fundamental definitions of c in c out and then the program structure okay so then you have uh, the definition of class add data privacy different additional operators which are uh, you have scope resolution operator and then you have additional uh, functions related concepts that includes uh, inline functions then you also have uh, the member functions the concept of member function okay so these are uh, the i mean this is about uh, introduction unit in uh, uh, C++. So in this unit, if any student has any specific doubts, you can ask me now, or uh, you can ask me to repeat any of the any of the concepts. Okay. So for your uh, uh, benefit, what I have, uh, please notice that I have already started recording. okay so as usual uh, take the chat box and drop your roll numbers so that i can consolidate the list of uh, presentees in today's class <coughs> okay so all of you please drop your roll numbers so that i can consolidate the list of presentees and update the same to the department but half of the class is absent 30 students are absent why 31 29 are present okay fine so my first uh, point is i think let me close this windows i think the complete slide is not visible otherwise okay so i hope the slide is visible without any word cuttings is it visible slide yes sir okay fine so before i take up uh, uh, the questions okay which are focused from unit 1 i want uh, you to raise any of the doubts if you have any doubts uh please come in and uh, ask me the points or otherwise you look into the uh, focused questions anybody has any doubts sir is yeah go ahead what is the difference between data encapsulation and data hiding okay so what is the difference between data encapsulation and data hiding okay so data encapsulation is the mechanism or it is the process of processing the data okay or manipulating the data 
with associated member functions okay so when you take up any object oriented programming language the classes are the basic building blocks of handling the data when you deal with any object oriented programming language classes are the primary basic building blocks to handle the data okay now the procedures are the functions by using which you operate on the data are called as the member functions are the methods okay now the process of combining those entity specific attributes which are nothing but your data along with its associated member functions is called as data encapsulation <clears throat> let me repeat the process of the process of um combining combining both the data as well as uh, as well as the associated member functions by using which those are by using those methods any any uh, object can get to access the data or manipulate the data this process is called as data encapsulation so we are encapsulating the data indirectly with the permission of a function so that from main you are giving a policy to access that data which is legal based on the assigned access specifier so this is the notion of data encapsulation okay now there is a small difference between data encapsulation and data privacy okay so data encapsulation uh, another example you can probably give is if you take a if you take a structure okay which is uh, the last topic that we have discussed in uh, programming c there also data is encapsulated but we have segregated the different attributes we have segregated the different attributes of different data types of a single entity so that is also called as encapsulation so encapsulation is nothing but packing everything at a reasonable uh, under a single tag name at a reasonable uh, place under a single tag name now under the notion of object oriented programming programming uh, concept the definition of data encapsulation is completely dependent on the functions why because we define the functions explicitly as the public methods or the public member functions by using which we are accessing the data so therefore the mechanism of binding the entity specific attributes the entity specific attributes within brackets data along with its operational member functions which in other words are also called as methods is called as data encapsulation okay now coming to data privacy we identify among the attributes of the different entity which needs to be maintained privacy and those attributes will be kept under private access specifiers okay so sometimes even the methods for example uh, we generally talk about methods which are under public so it is also possible even to define the methods so uh, yeah, just one minute one minute hard spot on him huh? हॉटस्पॉट ऑन में है आता है मैं आता है मैं यहाँ से रख आता है नीचे ले ले जा नीचे ले ले जानो को यहाँ से रख इसका नेटवर्क नहीं है कंप्यूटर में नेटवर्क नहीं है मिडिल में दूसरे जन दिसते हैं तीजे आ वैसे तो हाँ टीचर का प्रॉब्लम होता है नहीं माँ टीचर का प्रॉब्लम है माँ दूसरे जना का दिस्ता है नहीं दूसरे जना का दिस्ता है नहीं तुझे दूसरे जना का वो है ना ले वो छोटी टीचर का वो प्रॉब्लम टीचर टीचर नहीं ब्लैक ब्लैक दिस्ते हैं स्टूडेंट और टीचर हम पूर्ति ने ब्लैक ब्लैक दिस्ते हैं अमी को देखो कनाएक्ट तो तू ब्लैक पेंट हटानी है दे� 
okay uh, i'm sorry uh, i got an interrupt from my son okay so <laughs> online classes uh, am i audible hello yes, yes sir. sir yeah yeah so i regret for that non maskable interrupt because <laughs> that okay so online classes for fourth standard fine uh, i was saying something what was that what was the topic we are we are discussing data privacy yeah data privacy so data privacy is achieved again by using those member functions which are uh, public member functions but explicitly keeping the data under private and are protected access specifier <clears throat> that's it so if it is for two marks what is the difference between data encapsulation and data privacy data encapsulation is the mechanism of binding the specific attributes along with appropriate member functions along with the appropriate member functions under a single class name is called a data encapsulation and during the process of segregation the data which is kept under the private access specifier okay uh, allows the programmer to address the data privacy that's it am i clear yes sir okay so <clears throat> any other uh, doubts any other doubts uh, open for doubts from unit 1 you can ask any doubt from unit 1 sir flow charts and algorithms uh flow charts and algorithms you are talking about drawing it or what is it you have to be specific you want me to take drawing <clears throat> drawing okay so we'll take one one or two uh, probably loops we'll take loops so also notice that sir, yeah tell me Recur while recursion sir flow charts okay, in recursion so flow charts with recursion okay fine we will do that we will do that okay so let, let, let us take up flow charts with recursion so assume that you are asked to what uh, recursion mm, okay so let us take uh, lcm and gcd let us take gcd okay so assume that you are asked you, you are asked to draw the flow chart of given two natural numbers uh, to find the gcd of given two natural numbers you are requested or you are asked to draw the flow chart so let me share the web page to share the web page and then you can probably try to analyze okay so is the whiteboard web page is visible web yes sir what is visible okay so let me write down the heading so i am talking about chart to find the gcd of two numbers okay so fine so notice that the concept of recursion comes in comes in where comes in where functions no so the concept of recursion comes in functions so first point is start from main so write this as start you have to think as if you are writing a program okay so once this is start now what you do is you accept two numbers so when you are accepting two numbers put that into a parallelogram because the data can be anything right so let us start 
except two numbers. Let us assume a comma b. Okay, and then you have to print uh, LCM and the GCD. So you take uh, LCM is equal to zero, and also you take uh, GCD. GCD is equal to zero. So I accept two numbers and then assume your answer says zero. Now at the end of this, you got the two numbers. Now what you have to do, you have to call the function. So which function will you call? We will find the GCD, very simple. GCD finding is simple by using recursion. Okay, so now what I'll do is, uh, we will call a function. That function will return. You have to draw a vowel, sh vowel shape here. Notice that processes has to be drawn using vowel. Okay. So now we call what? Uh, we will get GCD. Okay. So let us say get GCD is the function name. So you pass a comma b. Sir, no. Okay. Yes, sir, no. Now we will write get GCD as a recursive function. So blindly, I am assuming that get GCD will gives me the GCD of given two numbers A and B. Now, what will be LCM? LCM is product of the two numbers divided by GCD. Is that correct? Uh, am I lost? Am I audible? Yes, sir. Yes. Okay. So now next is once you get the GCD, once you get the GCD, now what you have to do? Now it is a rectangle because all the values are with you. Now you have to print, uh, oh, sorry, you have to calculate LCM. So what you do is LCM is equal to okay, so product of A multiplied by B divided by GCD. So after this, you need to print the answer. After this, you need to print the answer. So what you have to do is, you simply write another statement saying that you have to print, print LC and then GCD. Okay, so you need to draw mandatorily arrow. This concludes the process in main. But now you have to stop. The process has to be stopped. So at the end, you write uh, another uh, process, which is again a vowel shape. And then you tell that this is the end of the program. So this is stopped. This is the story in main, yes or no? Yes or no? Sir, rectangle boxes are used for? Rectangle boxes are used for uh, uh, calculations and used for initializations whose values don't change. Parallel are used uh, which are susceptible to change. That means you are expecting the stimulus from the external uh, input. Okay, so once, so as you can see in step one, when you are accepting the two numbers, those two numbers can be anything. So there is a prone of, uh, I mean, there is a possibility that you are, uh, your user is giving even some nonsense numbers. But when you are drawing the flow charts, you are not considering all the consequences. For example, I am assuming that user knows what are what are the meaning of numbers. So if you say if user enters, let us say uh, A as 10 and B as equal to, that means user doesn't know mass. Okay, so we are writing the logic. Are you getting my point? So we are assuming that user knows what is uh, what is meant by numbers. 
otherwise uh, you need to write a diamond here and, and then you have to tell that a and b both has to be numbers then go back and all that is not necessary understood sir for yeah. lcm equal to 0 and uh, gcd equal to 0 we should is keep a rectangle or uh, it's okay there is no see there is no strict rule that uh, you separate lcm equal to 0 gcd equal to 0 with, uh, mandatorily with a rectangle mandatorily with a parallelogram it is not uh, that strict but drawing a diamond symbol when, whenever you are uh, talking about making a decision is compulsory okay so okay. Whether to use uh, a rectangle or a parallelogram is up to up to you. It's uh, no there, there is no strict rule. However, it is always uh, uh, believed that professional uh, designers uses rectangle for uh, for uh, constants and uh, whose uh, values will not change or whose values are dependent on earlier inputs. And you use uh, parallelogram whose values at that stage can be anything which is caused by the external stimuli. Okay, so in this example, LCM is equal to and finding the GCD, these two uh, steps are dependent on the previous step. So therefore I'm using uh, a rectangle. Now notice that this fellow has a process. Get GCD is a process, so you have to write it as a vowel. Notice that the flowchart is not yet completed. You have to still draw this uh, get GCD. This is not yet completed. Okay, now let us draw that. So in order to do that, what you do is, if the page is not available, like uh, it is available in my case, if it is not available, you can actually turn back your page and you can start afresh saying that you are talking about the process of finding this get GCD. So you can probably write dot 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 like this. Uh, somebody is saying something. Okay, I think I interrupted. Uh, please go ahead. And meanwhile, I'll write this as get CD of. You take uh, some other formal variables. Let us say x and then y. And to avoid confusion, you take the same thing, which is a and b, because you are talking about the logic in terms of writing it in the flowchart. You are not you, your flowchart is not bounded to any language. Remember that. So this is another separate process. Now you are asked to do this by using recursion. So what do you mean? Uh, what is a recursive recursive logic? As long as A is not not same as B, you have to repeat. Yes or no? As long as A is not same as B, you have to repeat. So what we will do is probably we will uh, start coding it. Do you want me to code using recursion? Shall I code and then I'll I'll draw or what do you want me to do? If we code and draw, code and draw, sir. Yeah, it, if we code and then draw, it will be very effective. Okay, so let me open a new tab, which is C plus plus IDE. I'm sorry, system is getting hanged. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So this is a online GDP compiler. 173 is present, 173, 171, 147, yes, sir. participants, okay, 171, this is your voice, right, if I am correct, yeah, 173 is absent, okay, 147, absent, 154, 164, 164, Absent. 75. Okay, so hash include IO stream, then using uh, what is it? Using. using namespace. <laughs> 
okay so using namespace std next get gcd is my function two arguments now this fellow expects in main void take two variables and uh, let me take a and then b return sir return value for get gcd yeah return value is uh, again end that's correct so here we took lcm equal to 0 and then uh, comma gcd is equal to 0 now uh, see out enter uh, two numbers in take that into a and take that into b okay now you are assuming that you will get gcd using get gcd of comma you will get lcm as the product of a multiplied by b divided by gcd now you write c out where uh, gcd is this which is gcd and again see out your lcm is uh, this which is lcm and then return uh, one true process now let us start writing the function definition Okay, so this is returning return type now int take formals int x and then int y or you want me to take a and b let us take a and b only because the question is about uh, a and b notice that when you are asked to draw the flow chart it is not a mandate that you have to write the program I'm just uh, 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 trying you uh, sorry i'm just asking you to convert your uh, program to either a flow chart or into the algorithm okay so for effective understanding of uh, diagrammatic representation of flowchart or english representation of step by step algorithm i, I am now considering as uh, some of you have uh, raised the flowchart as well as algorithm representation of any logic okay so wherein you have recursion here right so here what i need is uh, are you following? Can somebody come in? Akshaya, can you able to hear? Yes, sir. Okay, fine. So, talk about the recursive logic. It has to return integer. Okay, so as long as if a is same as b, then you have you you can return either a or b. So else if that means a could be greater than b. If a is greater than b. What you have to return? You have to return again get GCD. Uh, a is big, so A minus B, comma B. Okay. Else you return get uh, GCD of uh, else means B is greater than A. That means A will be same, and then B has to be B minus. A. Let us run this. Yes or no? Yes or no? Yes sir, no. For your ease of understanding, I am also writing a logic by using recursion, uh, without using recursion. If I have, let us say, int a and then int b, what was the logic? What was the logic? While, while a is not equal to b, is not equal to b okay so if 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 a is greater than b a is greater than b then what you change a as a minus b if b is greater than a then you change b as b minus a and if yes, a should be that equal way. to it's okay is not uh, mm, check it out 
if a is b then you have to return i mean you have to return you have to return a or b this is the logic yes sir or no so lead to infinite loop na sir uh why you take let us say 8 comma 6 Six. Or after first condition checking, if a big a double equal to, if a becomes equal to b, then it will go into second statement. No? Then it will again a... means. Uh... Don't go. Take it out. You are talking about with recursion or with iteration? Iteration, sir. Uh, I'm sorry. I didn't. Uh, I couldn't able to hear. Sir, already in while we took like a is not equal to b, no sir. Yeah, yeah, that is correct. If a is not equal to b, then only you are doing. Then why if a equal to equal to b again? Uh, fine, 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 fine. That is correct. Yeah, that is correct. So here you return either a or b. Yeah, that is correct. Hmm. Anything else? Anything else? Is this correct now? So this is without uh, recursion, which is uh, from line number nineteen. I'm just making it as a comment. So let us uh, remove eight and okay, fine. Let us do the analysis by using eight and six. So eight is not equal to six is true. So here it comes. So here eight is eight is greater than six. So let me write the statement here. You got a is equal to eight. And you got b is equal to six. Now a is greater than b, so now here a becomes a becomes what? A becomes two, and b will be six. So in the next iteration, a will be two, b will be six. Now in this, in that case, this will be uh, this will be what? B is greater than a, so that means a becomes two, and b becomes four. Okay, so in the next iteration again, a becomes two and then b becomes two, and then it stops. Correct? Yes or no? So your GCD is two only. Can somebody talk to me. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Now focus in recursion. What is happening with? Uh, so let me comment all this. Let me comment from here till here as a multi-line comment. Okay. So now in recursion, let me again take uh, eight and then uh, maybe let me take uh, another common factor probably twelve and then uh, twelve and then uh, twenty-four. No, twelve and then uh, twenty. 20, 12 and then 20. So I'll get 4 as the GCD if I'm correct. Let us check this. Yes or no? 4. Greatest common divisor is 4. Yes sir, no. 5, yes, 6, sir. 7, yeah, 6, maybe 24. If I take 24, then I'll get 6. Let me take 24. No, not, not, not 6. I'll get 12. Let me take 20 only. 12 twos are 24, right? So I'll get 12. <clears throat> Shall we proceed? So assume that your values are uh, uh, 12 and then 20. So A is 12 and B is uh, 20. So this is false. Then A is greater than B. This is also false. And now you are making a same function call with get GCD of what is A? A was 12. And what is B now? B becomes 8. Okay, so in the next case, a will be greater than b, a will be greater than b. Now you are making a function call here with get gcd of, get gcd of a minus b, what is a minus b? 12 minus uh, 8, which is 4. What is b? b is 8. In the next case, again you will get another function call here with uh, else part here. Okay, so such that you will get again get GCD of A. What is A? A will be 4. What is B? B will be again 4. In the next case, it returns. When it returns, it comes back. 
it comes back and then it goes to the cursor are you in a position to see the cursor cursor is blinking is it blinking yes sir okay so yes, sir. here from here it returns it returns what it returns 4 here also it returns 4 here also it returns 4 okay so after completing this return which is at 4 4 it goes back to this return this also returns 4 then it comes to this return this also returns 4 and then finally it comes to this return which is also returning 4 and then it goes to this is the story of recursive gcd function same thing has to be drawn same thing has to be drawn first of all let us uh, execute this fellow For example we have took uh, i took uh, 8 and then 6 12 and then 20 okay so 8 and then 6 gcd is 2 lcm is 24 then uh, 12 and then 20 right and then 20. This it is 4 and LCM is 60. I hope it is correct. Is this correct? Is this correct? Yes, sir. No. Yes, sir. Okay. Now concentrate on uh, diagram now. So what is a diagram? Inside the process you will get a sub process. Simple. This is nothing but a process. This is also nothing but a process. Same thing you have to put it in the process. In which process? In uh, get GCD process. So now in get GCD of A comma B, now you are making a decision. What is the decision you have to do? If, if, if A is equal to B. If A is equal to B, okay. If A is equal to B, then, then your answer is A or B. If this is true, if this is true, then, then what? Then what? Return A or B. So, oh, and from here, I'm sorry, it goes back to here. Okay, otherwise, when it is false, when it is false, meaning when it is zero. means meaning when it is 1. Now here you have to make another condition. What is that condition? If A is less than B, if A is less than B. Okay, so if it is true, if it is true that means B is bigger you have to change b you have to change b such that such that b becomes b minus a b becomes b minus a and then And then all this. If this is false, if this is false, meaning if this is zero, then you have to change A with A minus B. Then you have to change A with A minus B. Right? 
write the arrow here probably draw a connector here okay and draw some one or two arrows here that's it if unfortunately if you are cutting this page here th then also there is nothing to worry so you can again draw a oval shape here and then you can say that get gcd of a comma b simple but this is a meaningful uh, flow chart of a recursive uh, calculation of gcd okay so now from here finally you will you will be going back here so here i think i have missed out arrow yeah so you are jumping from here and then you are stopping when a is becoming b and then you will get gcd and finally you will get lcm and you will be printing lcm and gcd okay so in this if this is a four mass question so then this part will be uh, will be one mark okay and this logic here will be of two marks and appropriate symbol usage and arrows the the the, the process flow so this will be for two marks appropriate conditions symbols and the uh, process flow will carry one mark okay am i clear am i clear yes sir okay so you can th this is what is expected only this is the i mean the, the 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 picture which is there on your screen is the actual answer whether you write a program don't write a program you write english uh, sentences or logics that is all immaterial it you have to you must be in a position to construct a recursive uh, logic with appropriate uh, uh, flowchart symbols so similarly factorial similarly numbers up to 1 to n anything anything using recursion can be asked now if the same thing is been asked as a flowchart okay so then you start then you write uh, step 1 step 2 step 3 then probably this is step 4 okay now this will be in in step 4 you are saying that you go to step dash okay so here you are writing step 4 why this is step 4 this is step 1 this is step 2 this is step 3 this is step 4 in step 4 you are saying that go, uh, you you call call get gcd of uh, a comma b which is as indicated in step dash that dash will come later then in step 5 this is step 5 now this is step 6 okay now in step 6 print lcm and gcd and then you write step dash okay now this is in step 7 in step 7 you start writing this fellow that is a is equal to b if a is equal to b okay if a is equal to b, then it is uh, arb or i think i am making too much complications so you can again separate this as steps here and uh, the function also as a step here for separate steps okay uh, let, let let me not mix the uh, algorithm here first done. concentrate on flow chart now flow chart is clear is the flow chart is clear Uh, please talk to me yes sir let me check the list of participants only 33 32 why <laughs> what happened what happened to the others hope everybody are fine all are fine fine and healthy
can somebody talk to me sir is everybody is fine fine and healthy yes sir yes sir mm, okay sir for print yeah. uh, print lcm and dcd we should keep rectangle or a parallel uh, that is okay you can keep rectangle because those are focused values it's not a process values only you are calculating the values already lcm is known gcd is also known put it in rectangle only processes where you are extending the logics needs to be written as oval okay okay anything else anything else okay so let me go back to my slides okay so any other uh, points in unit 1 you want me to repeat flow charts is clear now subsequently uh, in algorithm in algorithms also if it is uh, not using recursion then it will be straight forward step by step logics if it is recursion then you can separate you can separate the process by uh, indicating your function as a separate step by step process and main as a separate step by step process what i mean by that is you write this one mark process as one separate step by step process you write this process as a separate step by step process okay so you call this as step 1 step 2 step 3 and so on so in in that you write call a process get gcd of a comma b now here begin the process of get gcd of a comma b in this you again start afresh with step 1 so that will be very clear have you understood have you understood yes sir okay good yes sir fine so also please notice some of the other uh, focused questions list the different programming paradigms or narrate different computing architectures and platforms okay or mention the classification of different programming languages with advantages and disadvantages so different programming paradigms you can discuss about Uh, structured programming language assembly language assembly language structured programming c language then you have high level programming languages okay and also you can discuss about uh, uh, the the applets which are possible in uh, java okay so this is much more more towards the theory but the points needs to be written okay so what are the different computing architectures okay so here also you can write uh, there are three different computing architectures one is processor less computing architecture where you don't you cannot write a program okay maybe i i should split it this as a separate uh, uh, questions anyway the intention was uh, you will you will get any of these three questions under uh, question 1 one. one is what are different programming paradigms so you can write one as the processor dependent programming languages which are nothing but assembly okay second is procedural languages second is procedural languages so second is procedural languages where you can write about c procedural structural languages which are c which is nothing but c third is object oriented languages object oriented programming languages these are different programming paradigms okay then coming to the second question wherein uh, you are asked to discuss about different computing architectures so what you can do is there are uh, three or there are four categories of computing architectures one is processor less computing architectures cpu less there is no cpu so notice that when you don't have a cpu you cannot run any program so here there there are no programs you will have only circuits okay second is second is single processor single processor single microprocessor based 
based computing architecture. So this is where uh, uh, the different programming languages will come into picture based on uh, the requirements and uh, uh, the appropriate uh, language needs to be identified and the application has to be developed. And what is the third one? Third one is multi-processor. That means you will have two processors. Okay, so you will have probably N processors, N microprocessor based computing platforms. Okay, so here, <clears throat> here you will have uh, the workload which is distributed between multiple processors. Okay, so this is a third uh, architecture and fourth architecture is you will have something called as uh, client server architecture. Okay, client and then server architecture. You need to remember these four terms and it is uh, in, the, in the name itself you will have the answers. One is processor less computing platforms. It does computers, I mean, it does computes the logics, but uh, inside, the, inside the circuits, you will not have a CPU. So there you cannot have any programming languages. You don't have, you, you cannot run, you cannot talk about the programs because there is no CPU, there is no heart. You will have only supply. Okay. Now second is single processor or single controller. And third is multi-processor or multi-controller. And fourth is client server. Client server means you host the package being installed only in the server and different clients can connect to the server by the uh, underlying networking architecture. So all together, everything is a separate, separate course that you will uh, take up in the upcoming semesters. So this is about the second one. Now, third is mention the different classification and different programming languages, this we have already discussed. One is assembly, second is middle level, third is high level. Are you listening? Am I audible? Are you following? Yes, sir. Okay. Next sir? is, yeah, go ahead. Sir, Bhavani is asking a doubt, sir. Sir, what yeah, are yeah, control? Ahead. What are the? Control structures. What are the control structures in a programming language? In a programming language, control structures refers to those syntaxes that are supported in that specific programming language that allows the program flow to move to a specific path. So in our uh, C as well as C++, different program controls structures are decision control, then loops. That's it. Under decision control, you will get again six. Under loops, you have uh, again uh, three syntaxes. And you also have unconditional loops. Am I clear? What are the different program controls? So program controls, different program control structures in C++, you will have uh, either decision controlled, decision control loops where you are talking about entering a segment of the code or you are skipping the entire segment of the code based on the correctness of the condition or you are repeating certain uh, code segment as long as the condition is true. So those are the program flow controls. In the name itself it is there, program flow control. You are controlling the flow of the sequential program. How is it possible using if conditions, using conditional constructs or using iterative loops or unconditional loops? Are you clear? Can somebody yes, sir. Acknowledge? Okay. Any other queries? It is good. You always need to interact because uh, we have been uh, living in this ocean of C and uh, C++. So, only when uh, you speak, then you will understand, okay? So to be precise, I will understand. Okay, so let me complete the other list of questions. Probably you can go through uh, <coughs> post the class and if at all you need any other uh, topic needs to be repeated, you can get back to me in uh, tomorrow's class. So the second question is explain the advantages of C++ compared with C. So you can blindly start a table. Okay, you can blindly start a table. On one side, they're taking C and on, one, uh, on another side, you can uh, start writing about uh, C++. 
and whatever we have studied in unit 1 starting from unit 1 and till unit 5 okay you can keep on writing all those points so recall our physical classes where i said where i said there are uh, around two dozen list of differences between c and c++ starting from scope resolution starting from the type of the language c is a procedural language c++ is a object level language you talk about code reusability in, uh, in c by using functions here we not only capitalize the usage of functions but also we use the notion of inheritance and in C, it does not support exceptions. C++ supports exceptions. Then C does not support polymorphism. C++ supports polymorphism. Okay, so here everything is wrong. Everything is wrong in C. Okay, then in C, you don't talk about uh, data privacy. You talk about data privacy in C++. Okay, code reusability using inheritance is possible in C++. It is not there in C. Okay, so friends are there in c++ not there in c okay then you have virtual uh, i mean all the concepts that we have studied in second semester is there only in c++ and it is not there in c so that is about the second one now what is an adt how is it achieved using uh, i mean in c++ that is by using scope resolution so demonstrate with an example then what is data hiding Demonstrate how the security is addressed in C++. Define class and object. List the differences between structure versus a class. Are seen and see outs. Mention C++ program structure with the pseudo code. Okay, so please don't start writing uh, stdao.h, printf, scanf, clr, scr. Okay, so when you are writing C++, you have to write uh, IO string, seen and see out. Then flowcharts and algorithms, I think we have already discussed. Next, the other questions includes continuation of this. What are the decision control statements supported in C++, which are again same as C, explained with examples, sometimes with flowcharts. Then what are the advantages of switch case compared with other decision control statements? What is the difference between a class and a structure in C++? I think it is repeated. Then what are the classification of loops explain those loops with the syntax flowchart and examples so you write only simple examples if a theoretical question like this appears in your external exams don't take up a flowchart uh, flow of a prime number okay or uh, example of a uh, sine x or cos x okay it, take, it eats a lot of time so what is important, what is been emphasized in the question is whether the student is known about how to write the loops, about the syntaxes. And don't forget to keep semicolon after uh, while in do while. And don't write anything after do, when you do, when you are writing do while. Okay. Then 13, what is the difference between a member function and a generic function? Okay, member function is something which is there inside the class and member function in order to use you need to bind it with an object whereas in generic function there is no strict rule. Are you listening? I think we are uh, up with the time. I will just take a couple of minutes. I have only these slides. This is my last slide. Just go through these uh, questions. Uh, let me ask one question in uh, question number 13. Okay, member function versus a general function. Okay. Is it possible to call a member function inside a general function? And or is it possible to call a general function inside a member function? Let me repeat. Statement one. It is possible to call a general function in a member function Statement two is, it is possible to call a member function in a gen general function. Sir, it is possible to call only general function through member function. Why it is not possible to call a member function in a general function? Sir, because the scope of a 
class uh, class object was uh, not declared in the function which was uh, newly called how can you tell that for example in a general function if i declare the uh, uh, an object and then can't i call a member function ah uh, then we can call sir. yeah yeah so the answer is both are possible okay both are possible only thing is the scope and the permission of uh, the member function it needs it must be called by using a by using a object or in other words you cannot call a member function without an object now here there is another point is it possible to call a member function without object binding yes or no if yes how if no why let me repeat is it possible to call a member function without object binding yes or no sir by public and by pub using public no we we discuss about the member function always by using public only yes sir the member functions are always public only let me again repeat the question is it possible to call a member function is it possible to call a member function without binding an object if yes how if no one only friend friends can be called no how why let me again repeat my question is it possible to call a member function which is not a friend i am talking about a member function is it possible to call a member function without object binding so probably i'll take up this question in uh, next class okay i think uh, it makes sense uh, in understanding uh, how to effectively uh, use the notion of uh, code reusability by using a general function and also code reusability that is possible by using a general function i think i i, I mentioned general function first and then the code reusability using member function also okay sir we can only call from a member function to another member function of a same class without object binding so that means the answer is yes or no Yes, if yes, if it is a function call from a member function through to to a member function. That is correct. Okay, so that needs to be elaborated with an example. Probably you can again take an example of uh, GCD and LCM. See, I need uh, LCM. Let us suppose I want data privacy. You declare your the variables A and B as the private variables in your uh, class. Okay, so you want LCM. now in that process you calculate gcd now your gcd can be a member function simple okay uh, i don't know whether you are following have you followed are you following yes sir okay so maybe i'll take up another example of calling a member function without object binding it is possible provided the provided you are calling that member function as a part of a function call within the member function you have one member function as a part of executing that member function it is possible to call a member function as well as a general function okay so there is no strict compliance that you have to mandatorily uh, bind the object okay so i'll take up this uh, part uh, which is a very important uh, point of uh, code reusability of not only the general function but also the member function i think somebody is texting me let me check that uh, chat 142 what is the syntax sir, for calling member function through member function i i'll discuss that uh, in tomorrow's class okay constructor destructor uh, again you are talking about objects there 121 no no is not correct answer 121 the answer is yes it is possible okay now 142 what are the control structures i think i said about control structures 126 
126 then anybody else okay no one has raised any other questions let me check uh, my some of the students still 32 only uh, please uh, ask the other students to go through the recording of this uh, lecture because uh, this is something which is which needs to be remembered when you write in the exams there are two 138s maybe 138 is using two devices fine uh, 125 anusha is there fine then one <coughs> 147 is absent okay 154 is also absent 157 is also absent then 175 is also absent okay okay fine so these are the questions which i have uh, uh, kept in front of you as the focused questions in unit one and calling a member function within a member function we'll discuss in the next class anybody has any specific thing to tell i'm done with the today's class is the approach what what i'm following is it okay Yes, sir. Okay. So, next class we'll uh, discuss the member function within a member function and a general function within a member function and a member function within a general function and a general function within a general function. I mean, all permutations and combinations. And then subsequently, we'll uh, go, uh, we, we, we will uh, take up uh, unit two. Okay. Okay, then. Uh, I have reached Hyderabad. Okay. So, two days back I reached, no, not two days. One day back, day before yesterday, yeah, two days. And uh, it seems people are not uh, taking that much precautions, but uh, please uh, take uh, good uh, preemptive measures. Otherwise, uh, this is a deadly virus. Okay, so it's always be at the safer uh, side. So follow the precautions. As per the suggestions which are given by WHO and the other regulatory agencies. So let us hope uh, this pandemic will end soon and then we will again meet physically. Okay, then bye. Do you want this recording? Anybody please uh, talk to me. You want this recording to be posted? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay, fine.